This is an English listening practice. I will read the same sentence twice. Please fill the blank space with a word. The opercular valves of sessile cirripedes are, in every sense of the word, very important structures, and they differ extremely little even in different genera. But in the several species of one genus, Pyrgoma, these valves present a marvelous amount of diversification. The homologous valves in the different species being sometimes wholly unlike in shape. And the amount of variation in the individuals of several of the species is so great that it is no exaggeration to state that the varieties differ more from each other in the characters of these important valves than do other species of distinct genera. The opercular valves of sessile cirripedes are, in every sense of the word, very important structures, and they differ extremely little even in different genera. But in the several species of one genus, Pyrgoma, these valves present a marvelous amount of diversification. The homologous valves in the different species being sometimes wholly unlike in shape, and the amount of variation in the individuals of several of the species is so great that it is no exaggeration to state that the varieties differ more from each other in the characters of these important valves than do other species of distinct genera. As birds within the same country vary in a remarkably small degree, I have particularly attended to them, and the rule seems to me certainly to hold good in this class. I cannot make out that it applies to plants, and this would seriously have shaken my belief in its truth, had not the great variability in plants made it particularly difficult to compare their relative degrees of variability. When we see any part or organ developed in a remarkable degree or manner in any species, the fair presumption is that it is of high importance to that species. Nevertheless, the part in this case is eminently liable to variation. As birds within the same country vary in a remarkably small degree, I have particularly attended to them, and the rule seems to me certainly to hold good in this class. I cannot make out that it applies to plants, and this would seriously have shaken my belief in its truth, had not the great variability in plants made it particularly difficult to compare their relative degrees of variability. When we see any part or organ developed in a remarkable degree or manner in any species, the fair presumption is that it is of high importance to that species. Nevertheless, the part in this case is eminently liable to variation.